Hey guys, just wanted to start this tutorial off with a little bit of a different pace. Um, I don't know if you're new or advanced, but I think most, if not all of us, went through a process where we opened up Blender for the first time and we had no idea what we were going to be able to do at all, period. And some of us hit the wall pretty quick and didn't want to do it anymore. I saw a lot of people kind of just fall off. Um, we all started with a donut tutorial, and then it's, it's kind of embarrassing, but I'm actually going to show a couple of the videos that I did in the beginning. All right, don't beat me up for this, guys, but we got to play this. Okay, so we're going to be snapping together a number of 3D cubes. But first, I want you to look up here in this top center. You can see the magnet symbol here. You should go ahead and activate that. Once you see it highlighted blue, you know you've got it selected. That's enough of that one. All right, guys, this one's even worse. This is this is maybe the worst tutorial I've ever done. It might look like kind of cool at first, but that's a year ago. And I started this like 15, 16 months ago, but I wasn't doing tutorials when I first started. Uh, the tutorials really helped. Uh, yeah, so 39 views. Let's play this bad boy. All right, so in this part of the tutorial... Don't say it, dude. I'm going to teach you how to create... A basic advertisement. No, you're this not. This one I picked Pringles. I uh, absolutely love Pringles. They're fun. Oh, well, this is difficult. Texturing, texturing. Of an, an object, a food object, especially something we can all get into. Everybody loves food. So, <laughs> done here. I think it's not too we'll bad. The extra like the chips texturing. came out. Look pretty real. The chips came out all right, man. Clean this up. Those aren't like bad. Said, like you can see a little samples. shadow through there and everything. I got samples. crumbs. Oh, this is bad. So, oh no! As you would go around, you can see. I that tried I to hide that. But it didn't work. Going on here. I'll show <laughs> you how to do all that. How to obviously. Model I'm going to show you how to put all those lights in the wrong way. Effectively. Right. Let's 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 get started with the tutorial. If you suffered through all that, God bless you. And I just want to say, hey, you know, if you're not doing that bad, I think you're doing all right. Stick it out. Stick with Blender. Uh, Give yourself some time, let the process work. And just like Blender Guru said, you really don't even use everything that's inside of Blender. I mean, at this point now, I'm building my own add-ons. Um, I can navigate geometry nodes with pretty high degree of confidence and create some pretty cool things. So be patient with yourself and take yourself too serious and have fun while you're doing it. That's what's the number one rule in the contract. All right, time for a quick update on Blender 4.0. I was looking for this thing and I saw this, I was looking for the fractal uh, Voronoi texture and I'm like, where is this thing? So over here in the Blender launcher, just so you guys can see this straight away, uh, this is the release from June 17th if you're using Blender launcher. And if you are not using Blender launcher, here is the nomenclature. I'll tag that down below, that way you guys can see what the code is if you wanted to grab this release. This is under the experimental branch. And the Fractal Voronoi Texture, and I don't know how many of you guys did this, but for like the first year of using Blender, I called it the Voronoi Texture. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, it's got three new inputs, and it's got a normalize. And if you understand the normalize, it's going to give you a zero to one range automatically. And it can uh, actually exceed that in some rare cases when you have the F2 connected for the distance. Okay, so that may be a little issue run into. And just do a quick little plug on my Blender Market page. I've got some really cool add-ons I've made over the last few months, like the I2M, the Bull Box. It's like 60 cents. You go, go get that and check it out. It's a lot of fun. And then I've got the Hard Service Toolbox and a few other things, like the Light Magic Studio. And over on my Gumroad, I've got a lot of free add-ons and some really cheapo ones too, and some cool downloads and some blend files for some past tutorials that I have done. So go check that out, link below. All right, now upon coming into the fresh copy of Blender that I've got here, I'll jump into the EV Engine and Shift A S, and I'll just type in for the Voronoi texture. And straight away, you're gonna see the distance, the color, the position. 
You're going to have obviously one, two, three, and four D, which is a progressive step. You're going to have these uh, different distance. I'm just going to call them distance parameters, maybe something like an algorithm. And then uh, down here, you're going to have the normalize checkbox, which gives you that zero to one ratio. And then, of course, you've got your vector scale detail, roughness, lucrinarity, and then the randomize. And so straight away, you could plug the color in and get the good old-fashioned Voronoi texture. Okay, pretty cool. You know, if you plug the distance in, you get like the black and white version. And of course, you can play around with the scale on this and the detail. You can make like little clouds, smudges, whatever you want to do with it. And I pulled up the 3.6 beta, which I am using pretty religiously right now, just so you can have a little side by there we go. A little side-by-side -side comparison of the old one and the new one. I think this helps. I love when people do this in their tutorial so you can actually see what has changed. Okay, so the distance, color, position, still got that. The vector scale and random. You now have got scale, detail, roughness, look, and the random. And you've got the normalized checkbox, which when you check that, it's going to start getting a little more interesting because you can keep things, I think, a little bit more even. So there's really no tutorial out there that I've seen that shows a really good overview of the Veroni texture, like the new things that are out. So I've kind of been playing around with this thing for a few hours and then got distracted with the geometry nodes. So the color, you can plug this directly in. You know, we can put in the color ramp, of course, and change how this looks in so many ways. We can add in a number of stops and then add in our own color scheme if we want and do something you know very random like that i kind of like that doesn't look too bad and then i was kind of messing around with it and i was like let's try some displacement so i'll go for a displacement node here and i want to just go ahead and connect this up and then i'll connect the position to the normal here and we can have a little bit of fun with this. And this is where you start getting that kind of fractal look. It's the only way I found to do it. And I'm sure that there's some people out there that are way better than this uh, than I am. But this gives you an idea of what you are going to be able to do with this node. And then, of course, you, know, you just kind of play around with it and start plugging in some different things. And you can see the kind of breakup that I'm getting here is actually pretty nice. And just kind of messing around with it, the best look that I was able to get was pulling the color into the color ramp, changing those said colors that I've got, something like that, and then bringing the uh, transmission to as clear as possible and maybe kind of playing around with the roughness factor just a little bit. And then I guess we could bring the color up to pure white. And I really like how that looks. It's actually pretty cool. And then, of course, you can do a bunch of other things. And I guess we could just Shift D, copy that, bring this one over here. You could throw in a mix color and just dump that in, and bring this color in to the top value, and bring this one in to the second. And then I can come in, and I think we got our option here. Yeah, we could flip the color ramp, then maybe change this one to something like purple. And then come down here and bring the detail down just a touch, something like that, and give it a little bit more of a fractal depth. With that. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's kind of play around with the normalize factor here. I'll turn this off, and it's going to take a second. I think it's kind of heavy, so just kind of flip these on and off. Cool, yeah, so just bringing the value between 0 and 1 for the current settings, the color, and the scale, and all that good stuff. Now, the detail controls the number of layers that the Voronoi texture is going to um, compute. And so if you bring that down, it brings the layers down. If you bring it up, of course, it's going to bring those up and compute more. And the roughness controls how much influence the higher layers have on the final output. And yeah, I guess it would have more effect on the second one I'm working on right here because I did change. Uh, the detail to a much lower value here. You just gotta play around this thing. Gives you a little bit more of a basic setup idea. 
and the lucranarity is going to control a factor on how each layer is actually scaled or excuse me each successive layer so you know you can come up with quite a few different things and if you didn't want that broken up fractal look you can pull the randomness down i think it kind of steals a lot from it it gives you that old school kind of box look not my favorite uh, but you could do that and combine it here so you have that double layer and that actually looks good that's not too bad at all but for sure i did not get that fractal look without the displacement so if you were to cut the displacement completely out you just go back to this really bland and boring setup now if you come over here to the geometry node editor click new just so we can kind of pull this up and do a slate visualization uh, you do have the Voronoi texture in here as well with the field outputs so you can kind of mess around with this like with a set position and a few other things and so let's kind of mess around with this thing and i want to do kind of like recreate something or more or less finish it so i'm going to throw in a dual mesh and I'll throw in a split edges node and maybe a triangulate will help us as well. And I want to continue to use the original geometry. So I'm going to put in a subdivide mesh right here. I'll bring the levels up to something like that. It actually creates a sort of a bevel. I don't like the uh, like the beveled vert edges but uh, yeah anyways so now what we can do is put in a scale elements and let's break this up so if you scale this down yeah there we go cool so now it's actually uh breaking up the pattern here or rather it's breaking up the mesh for us due to the subdivisions we could bring the veroni see I, I i can't i can't do it i'm trying to say that and let's bring the distance into the scale and see yeah that's pretty cool I think we just about got the Voronoi texture in there and you can bring up the detail and kind of play with this thing a little bit click normalize so it's kind of there uh, something to work on just a little bit more but there was one more thing if you stuck it out this long I think this is pretty cool so we already created a Voronoi texture right and now we're going to create a Voronoi pattern with geometry nodes. So let's put in a set material. And this is fun because I was playing around with this thing. The only material I've got in here is the one I just created. And so now there's our Voronoi texture on our Voronoi mesh with a Voronoi pattern. Um, so I think if the scale could be messed around with here. So I'll just throw in like a little math and turn it to multiply so I can kind of screw around with it. And now if I play with this, the pattern should be broken up in the shape of Voronoi with the Voronoi texture on it. And it kind of is. I think that there is one issue, though, because under the shader editor, I've still got uh, the other setup here, which I don't think I actually want. What was the big difference here? It was the randomization. And then maybe bring the scale up just a touch on that and then jump back over into the geometry nodes and we'll grab this ultimately yeah that looks pretty good anyhow so there's a lot more you could do with that and one quick little thought here if we do something we could throw another little node group up here in the middle of all of this and i think we could probably duplicate that oops don't want all that should I just control z back i don't need that so i'll put in a dual mesh right here and this might actually work good with let's put in a bounding box right here and i'm going to plug in the og right here and i'll plug the bounding box into the mesh dual mesh now i want to do a mesh to curve and plug that in and then i'll do a curve to mesh and we'll plug that in and now right here i want to put in 
a curve circle, and I don't see it there for some reason. I'll just type in curve C, and then I don't want to tag that in yet or ever until I actually change this to point zero zero one or something like that, really nice and low. And now we can plug this in and might get a very interesting effect. Let's put in a join geo right here and just drop that in. And let's see, we might be ready to plug this in. And if I plug this in right here or not, if I plug that in, it's kind of giving me something, but it's not really what I want. So I think we could kill that. I'll bring this over here. I know it's looking a little crazy, but what I'm going to do actually is join the geo again. I'm going to cut that off, split this. And what I want to do, let's see. I want to take the join here and plug it in and then take the curve to mesh and plug that in right here and now that should be on the outside and obviously not done yet let's throw in a transform geometry right here and let's scale that up just a touch that's very interesting all right one more thing i actually want to do with this i think we could subdivide the mesh here as well that's pretty cool that's a little bit more of what i was looking for and that is just about the shape of it all right a couple things i actually had a little bit of a, a crash out it got kind of heavy so what i've done is i'm going to turn the subdivide levels down a touch i just want to get rid of the bounding box completely and i'm going to tag in the convex hull instead. I think that's actually going to end up giving a little bit better shape. And I actually just turned the sub mesh down all the way because it seems to have grabbed the Veroni texture, which I like. Um, okay, so that's cool. So down here, one of those things we're going to do is we want to throw in a join geometry. And this is a cool little trick you can do. And you can join in anything you want. And when you do that, it's going to bring in with that transform uh, another mesh that's going to be locked inside, kind of like a net. Pretty cool thing. Uh, so if you duplicated this, probably 0 0.005. And what I'll do is I'll put this to, I think, negative 2 on the Y. And then I'll tag that in. And I could probably bring that up a little bit. That's pretty cool. And it could start getting a little heavy, so be careful. But that's really neat how it grabbed the Voronai texture uh, for the net pretty much. Yeah, so I like that. Anyways, you could throw a bunch of stuff in there. That's it. I don't want to complicate everything. All right, so for that actual webbing, I could throw a material in for that and probably put one in here so set material right after the curved circle that would make sense it would make too much sense so let's throw it right after the curved circle all right there we go <laughs> so anyways you can have a lot of fun with this i think that if we just ran this up to metallic and pulled it back it may end up looking like a spider web or something yeah that's pretty sick all right, guys, appreciate you watching, watching, I say that every time, I get so tired of saying that. Appreciate everybody watching, smash that subscribe, smash that like button. I'm so tired, I'm, you know, I'm probably leaving that in the tutorial. So if you like the video, smash the like, smash the subscribe. And if you feel like it, at the bottom of all of my videos, there's a little thank you for support if you want to support the channel. See you guys in the next one. Let's get started.